your healer. Come on, lift it with me. Come on, help me, team. I am the Lord. That he lived me. I am the Lord. I am the Lord, your healer. I said my word. I said my word. And I heal your disease. Come on, just one more time. Bask in his presence. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. That healeth me. That healeth me. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord, your healer. Your healer. Oh, I send my word. I send my word. And heal your disease. And heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Can you praise him for healing? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are healed by the wound in his side. We are healed by the wound in his side. We are healed by the wounds in my Savior's side. We are healed by the wounds in his side. Thank you for healing us, Lord. Thank you for healing us, Lord. You are our healer. Hallelujah. You are our healer. Nothing is impossible in your presence. You are our healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in the midst of your people. Now speak to us now. Speak out of the fullness of your word. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're continuing in our series entitled The Extraordinary Life. Listen, I believe that God wants you and I to live extraordinary lives. A life beyond what is usual or ordinary, exceptional in character. I believe for one to live an extraordinary life, one must, number one, embrace the truth of who God says we are. We must know our identity in the kingdom. Number two, experience the close proximity the Father desires with us, intimacy. And number three, express the closeness of the Father and the truth of being a Jesus kind of human identity to all we encounter. I do believe that intimacy, identity, leads us to a place called integrity. It is here where we are this morning. It is the third and final segment in our series that we begin today focusing our attention with this thought, the essence of integrity. Follow me in the spirit as we hear what the Lord is saying expressly to his people. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. These are the days where you can't turn it off. So the Lord says, do not try. Frequencies are high. Because there are many lower sound waves that's bringing weariness and frustration to the people of God. So he calls the prophetic to rise above the frequency of the weary and to release the sound of heaven to people, to
to tune in. Rest in, he says, rest. Speak as much as he says. There is a call on you. A demand from heaven on your life. Hallelujah. It's a new season that you're entering in. Hallelujah. You said you're not going to run out of it this time. But I tell my young soul, you're going to see some unusual signs and wonders in the next six months. Hallelujah. You're going to see what you saw in the dream. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. And the Lord said, none of that is slack. Hallelujah. It wasn't just a fairy tale. You will see the miracles you saw in the dream. Does that make sense, daughter? Hallelujah. You're going to see them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody clap your hands. You're wondering what's going on. God's got something that he needed to tell her. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. You know why it's important that you, the sound, all sound is important. Hallelujah. So everybody, when it's time to clap, you clap. When we say shout hallelujah, you do what? Hallelujah. hallelujah. All of it's important. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Frequencies are, are shifting in this atmosphere, in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's a, a subatomic sound that comes from the house of God that disturbs the atmosphere when we begin to praise and worship. Hallelujah. And we begin to release the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. God has given his people power. I, I, I'm going to try on this side. God has given his people power. Hallelujah. He's given us authority. Hallelujah. And we walk in our power and our authority and our strength. Hallelujah. We didn't just come here to make noise and not to see things happen. No, we want to see things shift and happen in our culture. Hallelujah. We are not just a noise making church. Hallelujah. But we are a church that has been called to transition the culture. Hallelujah. To challenge the present forces of the day and tell them we will stand up and release the power of God into our earth and into our community. Do I have anybody in the house? Anybody virtually that believes me? Hallelujah. That's what God is calling for in this hour. Oh, no, we must not come in here and shout and feeling good. No, we're leaving here with the anointing, with the power, with the opportunities to release the strategies of heaven into the earth. And we will do so. And we will do so. Glory to God. Acts chapter 19. I'm going to try to do my best. I'm going to bring it down. Y'all pray for me. I'm stirred. The brother is stirred. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw the enemy say, I'm going to bring weariness and steal their worship. Uh-uh. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You're going to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're going to give God the glory. Hallelujah. With the bills in your hand, you praise him. Hallelujah. When you don't know how you're going to make it, you're going to praise him anyhow. When it seems like one trouble after another trouble, God, I'm going to still give you glory. You're going to show me how to work this out. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care. It may seem ridiculous to some men, but to the people of God is access to the power of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Shabaya kumbadaya. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the anointing of God. I feel you, God. Hallelujah. Stir it up, Lord. Stir it up, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what it sounds like. This is the sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stir it up, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. You know how to praise him. Stir it up. Hallelujah. Let the anointing be stirred in the room. Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 hallelujah, Jesus, 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 19. Let's see. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Shall we pray, Lord, open our eyes, our ears, our hearts. Let us be led by your spirit. Let us hear what the spirit is saying to the church. And all the people said amen. The essence of integrity. I believe the essence of integrity for the believer is a life that is filled and overflowing with the Holy Spirit. I believe the essence of integrity for the believer is a life that is filled and overflowing with the Holy Spirit. The essence of something is the basic, real, and invariable nature of a thing with significant individual features or features. It is the natural, true substance or constitution of anything. Integrity is the state of being, whole, entire, or undiminished. A soundness of moral character and honesty. He, the Holy Spirit, is a divine person. He is fully God. Everything that God does, Helen, the Holy Spirit does. There is only one God who has eternally existed in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each of them fully equal in divine essence. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is a divine person. He is the indwelling divine person. He is the indwelling divine person whose primary purpose is to make Jesus known to us. Amen. Bishop Monroe Saunders Jr. in his writing Transformational Thoughts helps us to understand the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. He says the work of the Holy Spirit within a person's life brings about transformation. Individuals are not capable of transforming themselves. Self-produced transformation is more of a personal makeover, which addresses issues of outer conformity rather than issues of inward spiritual metamorphosis. Spiritual transformation occurs through personal pursuit in the presence of the Holy Spirit and a continuous yielding of the mind of God exposed within that presence. Personal sacrifice pre precedes mind renewal. The surrendered life positions and aligns itself for transcendent engagement. In other words, it orients the mind for absorption of divine thought. The transformed life is the life that has sacrificed itself so that it may comprehend the thoughts and energy that flow from the mind of God. 
Now thanks be unto God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. God working through us is a powerful thought. To consider that we are in, inhibited by the sacred essence of the Holy One puts our lives into unique perspective and establishes for us a foundation of contextualizing the whole of life. When we live with a consciousness of actions, a consciousness of the sacred within us, we allow the sacred to inform and direct our action. We release a sacred essence into the atmosphere and sanctify the environment through our presence. We, therefore, become living evidence of the invisible life force of the Holy Spirit. You are a living, breathing representative of the Holy Spirit. Allow that spirit to work in you, to flow from you into the lives of those you meet. We bear the essence of the Holy One. We are the fragrance of Christ in the earth. The essence of integrity, the crust of a Jesus kind of human, the emergence to one's optimal place, is the power of the Holy Spirit igniting, infusing, interceding through us and inspiring us to be. Allowing ourselves to be placed on the showroom floor of life, displaying his workmanship, his masterpiece, his creational design. We are Christ, Christ in us the hope of glory being manifested to the earth. God does great things through people who are empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. God does great things through people who are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I know three-fourths of the church united around the world and saying, yes, amen. I'm saved. I have the Holy Spirit. Yes, praise God. The Spirit of God is in me. Hallelujah. My question is not that you have the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have you? You got the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have you? The church in America today is filled with people who have the Holy Spirit, but does he have them? We are dealing with weak worship. Weaning witnesses. Unwilling workers. Spirit of casualness. We need the Holy Ghost. There is a difference between having the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. Many people in the church have the Spirit, but they are not filled with the Spirit. We are experiencing it first time because of the growth of, Pente the growth of Pentecostalism and full gospel. We're experiencing people who have had an experience but have not had the baptism. So they have crept into our midst and have allowed a spirit that says it looks like, it sounds like, it acts like, but it does not have the real thing. I know I'm going to get in trouble, but I don't give a hoot. Hallelujah, it's too late in the hour for me to care now. Hallelujah, we need the power of the Holy Ghost and we need the real deal. Amen, church. There is a difference between having the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. 
In John 4 and 14, Jesus said these words, John 4 and 14. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen? Jesus had to be in me before he could spring up in me. I couldn't get the Holy Ghost to spring up in my life if he wasn't in my life. Amen. Now, John 7 and 37. John 7 and 37. Jesus also said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, on that day, we understand, has passed. The Holy Spirit has been given. And it's time for the living water to flow through us. Amen. Not just be in us, conversion, but the river must flow through us, baptism. Amen. We may be living in a time of uncertainty and a time of distraction and confusion. But God is inviting his people beyond space and time into the secret strategy rooms of heaven. He wants to release to you the blueprints of his heart so that you can begin to release and conquer every impossible thing through him. He's inviting you, ma'am. He's inviting you, sir, to be consecrated, set apart, holy, and sanctified so that when you step into an atmosphere that is filled with the plans of the enemy, you can immediately discern those plans and destroy them in the spirit. God is calling his church now to arise and take authority in the earth. Do not ignore the stirring in the spirit. This is why you and I must walk in the spirit. We must live in the spirit. This is the day that the pew must be just as powerful as the pulpit. You can no longer wait on your man or woman of God just to give you a word to lay hands on you. But you've got to stir up the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you. You've got to pray with authority. You've got to cast the devil out of your children. You've got to bind the spirit that is in your home and bring freedom and liberty. God releases the anointing on you to act as his force in the earth. You don't need Bishop to do it. You don't need to call Elder Tanya to do it. But shake yourself and realize that you are a child of God. You are a blood washed anointed child of God. You've got the power to destroy the yokes of the enemy and walk in strength and nothing can defeat you. You sister, you brother, God has called and he releases the anointing Nodding on you. We must allow the Holy Spirit to empower us so we can make Jesus known to the world. Throughout the scripture, we see example upon example of the Holy Spirit working through ordinary individuals, causing them to do extraordinary things, manifesting his power. Abraham and Sarah having a child past the normal biological age his power. Moses doing signs and wonders in Egypt so that God's power may demonstrate it to the world. Elijah calling down fire from heaven to demonstrate the Lord is the true God. Jesus told his disciples that they would receive power to be his witnesses in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This power was primarily centered on the ability to be a witness to the resurrection of Christ. The biblical narratives after Acts chapter 1 verse 8 
showed the primary reason for the power was so that the apostles would demonstrate the word by healing the sick and performing miracles, causing men and women, boys and girls, to see the powerfulness of our God. Acts chapter 5 connects extraordinary signs and wonders to God. This added multitudes of believers to the Lord. In Acts chapter 8, we see how Philip was able to turn the whole city of Samaria to the Lord by moving in the power of signs, wonders, and miracles. Paul, the apostle, also utilizes this method of evangelism, saying that the Lord bore witness just to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done by the hands of Paul and Barnabas. Acts chapter 19, it says that God did extraordinary miracles by the hand of Paul while he was ministering in the city of Ephesus. Later on in Acts chapter 28, Paul was able to bring the gospel to the whole island of Malta. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul said that when he preached the word, there was always a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the power so that their faith would not rest on the wisdom or the rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. The supernatural move of the Holy Spirit is coming again upon the church like never before. I said the supernatural power of God is coming upon the church like never before. We will preach and signs and wonders shall follow. We will preach and signs and wonders shall follow. We will preach and signs and wonders shall follow. We will preach and signs and wonders shall follow. The church became a sign to the powers in the first century. And this church that's arising now, this reconstruct, reconfiguration, this repented and renewed body is arising like a mighty force in the earth to disturb the atmosphere and said we are here and we're going to take it back by force. Do I have anybody that's with me? I'm telling you that we are arising now. We are stronger than we have ever been. I'm not looking at the number of people, but I'm looking at the force of power. And if God is for us, he is more than the whole world against us. I want you to know that every day that you get up, you get up in kingdom power and authority. I want you to go into the boardrooms, into the offices, into your businesses, dress Rest in the power of God, walking in the anointing of God, allowing the spirit of God to use you. You're going to increase and excel like never before. Will there be challenges? Yes. Will there be conflicts? Yes. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he will condemn. This is the heritage of the Lord. What eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, neither has it entered the hearts of them that believe. But God has spoken to you. He has shown you in the spirit something. Don't you let go of your vision. Don't you let go of your dream. God God is up to something great in you. He's moving with power. He's moving with force. He's moving with great anticipation of those who say, yes, Lord, fill me, use me. Here I am. Do I have anybody that want that kind of power? Somebody say, use me, Lord. Say, do it in me, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Right there. That's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Marcus. Hallelujah. God's going to do it in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I haven't been able to shake this thing off of me. Hallelujah. Because God is saying, Sterling, I want an empowered church to arise in this hour. God spoke to me on, on, on this past Thursday, hallelujah, about what he, Wednesday, about what he wanted to do in this region. And God's going to do it by empowered believers that will rise up and move under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I believe we are a church that's ready. I believe we are a church that's ready to move with power. I'm not just talking it, but I'm believing it, hallelujah. You see, true renewal in our cities, in our region, will never come by mere activism and politics. We need the power of the Holy Ghost for systemic change. 
a thorough examination of Acts shows us that the church was able to bless communities and spread the word with a demonstration of supernatural power that accompanied the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is understanding the power in the life and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus and the apostles demonstrated the reality of the gospel with healing signs and wonders and supernatural work, how much more does the contemporary church need that same power to proclaim the good news? I want you to know I bless God for all the advancement of technologies I, I, in technology, in media. I bless God for the seven mountains that he's given us to take authority in. But the thing that causes us to have success because the doorway is open will be the power of the Holy Ghost. It will be those who walk in the anointing of the Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Revive your church. Come, Lord Jesus. Revive your church once again. I pray now for every person under the sound of my voice that the spirit of the Lord God be upon you because he's anointed you to preach good tidings to the poor. He's sending you to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open prison doors for those that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To comfort those who mourn. I pray that he gives you the oil of joy for mourning, beauty for ashes, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That you will be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. That you will begin to be builders of restoring the ruined places and build up the places that God is calling. That you would walk in the anointing. That every gift, every dream, every vision be activated in your spirit now. You are not too old. You are not too feeble. You are not too broke. You are just right for the anointing of God to flow through you in this hour. May he visit you. Hallelujah. And direct you now. Strategies be released from heaven into your life now. Every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice. God, release your strategies from heaven. Pour in the oil and the wine. That which restores and renew. That they may be released to do the work you've assigned their hands to do. If you believe it, it's a great place to give them a great praise. Give him a great praise. Come on, give him a great praise. Hallelujah. Paul asked the important question in our text as I close. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Receive and believe. Lord, let me receive what I believe. Lord, let me receive what I believe. There is a differential between believing and receiving. That we can be a believer in Jesus Christ yet not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When Paul found out the state of these men who believed, they were believers, they were followers of Jesus Christ, but they had not received the fullness. He immediately baptized them and prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit. My prayer is that every believer in Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministry, every citizen 
receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in its fullness. That you just won't be one who believes, but that you'll receive and walk in the fullness of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 There is so much more than God has for you, my brothers and sisters. God is pouring out on his people, Mom Stella. It is the time to get into the outpouring by connecting with others who are following the leading of the Holy Spirit. As the Lord said, you cannot contain what I'm releasing, but I want you to begin to move in the overflow of my spirit. It is time that you begin to flow in the spirit. Will you lift up your hands one more time? Hallelujah. Because there's a mighty anointing in this room. Hallelujah. Those of you that's right, just begin to jump to your feet and begin to stand with me. We're going to make a declaration in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the wind of God blowing on some of you now. Because some of you want it. Hallelujah. You want all of God. There are people in this room say, I want all of God. And the wind of God is flowing. You with that hand lifted up. Make this declaration with me. I declare the word of God has power to deliver and protect me. I declare I am strong and I work in partnership with the Holy Spirit. I declare I will find what I need when I wait on the Lord. I declare that the Lord has given me freedom from the enemy. Freedom is mine. I declare I will prosper in all that I do. I believe it in Jesus' name. Now give him a shout of praise. Come on, praise him right there. Hallelujah. The most shandere kora bahaya. Nibanandi o serene maya. Listen, God wants to speak to you today. Some of you in the coming weeks will begin to have dreams and visions and clearness of thought. This coming to you in this season like never before. He wants to speak to you and show you things that will amaze you. He wants to take you to a new place. He wants to simply to allow the Holy Spirit to rise within. This is the time where you must understand that you must walk in an overcoming spirit. The essence of integrity is being filled with the spirit and to have an overcoming testimony. To overcome means to conquer, to, to, to subdue, to, to surmount, to get better. There are many conflicts ahead. Conflicts, challenges, crises are all linked to the change of warfare. Because as we advance forward, those things come to try to distract us. But the Lord is bringing new strength to your spirit, man. Be strengthened with might in your inner man. Be strengthened it with might in your inner man. Remember, we do not walk according to the flesh, but we walk according to the Spirit of God. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord. Be filled with the Spirit. It will give you the boldness to be all that God's called you to be. My final remark is that many of you will begin to be a witness to your families. Speak the word of God boldly to them. Amen. Do not hide your faith. 
behind your familiarity of family. But be bold among them. For God wants to do a miracle in your family. Hallelujah. It starts in the families. And it will move from your families into the community. Hallelujah. God is up to something great. And I'm excited about what he's up to. How about you? Come on, put those hands together and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. Pastor Eric is coming, and then I'll come back with some final remarks. Amen. There may be someone in the room this morning.